Well, what was I? All right. Oh, hi everyone. It's me, Hannah Payne, and I'm back with another read along video. And we're on the fourth chapter of The Puppy Place Pugsley. Previously, in the third chapter, Weezy was worried that Ken, Pugsley's, Pugsley's owner, is going to bring Pugsley back to the animal shelter. But she can't let that happen. So she asked Aunt Amanda to train him. But she will also convince her parents soon. After all, her mother was a cat ma a cat person, and Lizzie and her family have been fostering puppies for a long time. So oh, without further ado the fourth chapter of this book. Hmm. Chapter 4. You're talking about Pugsley, right? Mom sounded amazing, otherwise known as Mr. Pest. The dog you said causes all sorts of trouble? The nutty little pug you've been telling us about? Do you think I'm crazy, or are you crazy? Well, Lizzie was sitting in Aunt Amanda's office, when she'd gone to call Mom, she could see out the big window into the indoor play area. All the dogs were inside now, and Aunt Amanda was trying to calm them down. Their owners will be coming soon to pick them up, and nobody liked driving and and nobody liked driving home with a hyped up pound. Pugsley wasn't helping manners. He was still zooming around, trying to get everyone to play. Hmm. Josie was trying to catch him, but somehow he kept squirting out of her grip. She kept, he kept squirting out of her grip. Weezy couldn't help giggling a little as she watched. Well, what? Her mother asked over the phone, and what's so funny? Actually, Lizzie confessed, it's Pugsley. I'm watching him right now. You're right, he does cause a little trouble sometimes, but he is so, 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 but he is so, so cute. You'll fall in love with him, just like I have, I promise. Hmm. Love is not the issue, her mom said sternly. I happen to like our house, and I don't want it destroyed. Pugsley isn't destructive, Lizzie said. At least, at least she didn't. At least she didn't think he was. She had never seen him pull all, all the stuffing out of a toy. The way Max was always doing, or scratch at the door, the way Fiona the Poodle did. He just likes to play, that's all. He'll be great company for Buddy, and the Bean will love him. I wish... I just wish we had time to talk this over as a family, Mom said. She sighed. But I understand. And... If we don't take him away, if we don't take him today, he's going to the shelter tomorrow, right? That's right. Lizzie crossed her fingers and held her breast, and his owners have agreed to let us foster him. Aunt Amanda had already called Ken for permission, and he was very happy to hear that Pugsley might be Going to a foster family. Yup. Mom sighed again. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm ready to give Pugsley a chance. Mm -hmm. Mom sighed again. Okay. Pugsley sighed again. Hmm. 
Mom sighed again, and, Okay, I'm willing to give Pugsy a chance, if you have to promise to. But Lizzie had jumped from her seat and was dancing around the office, grinning. She wasn't even listening anymore. She could guess exactly what Mom was trying to t- was trying what Mom was saying about taking responsibility and all that. Of course, Lizzie would take responsibility. Hadn't she and Charles had been very responsible with all the other puppies they had fostered? Sure, Mom, she said when she danced herself back over to the phone. So Aunt Amanda will drop me and Pugsley off. In an hour or so, oh, mm-hmm. I can't wait for you to meet him. She hung up before Mom could say another word. Pugsley was not exactly on his best behavior. During the ride home, Aunt Amanda had put him in the way back of the Bowser mobile. The special van she used for picking up and dropping off dogs. The van was very big and red, and its license plate read Poochies. Pooches. Inside, there were cages for eight dogs or more, if some were small. Right now, Aunt Amanda's pugs, Lionel and Jack, were sharing one of the cages, while her golden, while her while her golden retriever Bowser, took up another floor. Fiona the poodle was in a third. She was going to camp Bowser for the weekend. Lizzie was jealous. She wished she were going to Camp Bowser, but maybe she and Pugsley will be going sometime very soon. Pugsley had a cage all to himself. Lizzie would have thought he would be ready for a nap by then. After all, he had a long afternoon of of running and playing, but no. Mr. Pest still wanted to play. He he bounced from a, he bounced from side to side in his cage, barking constantly and poking his paw into the other dog's cages. Lizzie and Aunt Amanda did their best to ignore him, hoping his rowdy behavior would stop. At a stoplight, Aunt Amanda looked over at Lizzie and raised her eyebrows. You sure up for this? Lizzie could barely hear her over Pugsley's barking. She just, she just nodded. She was. She just wasn't sure about the rest of, the, of her family. She wouldn't have worried about Charles, and Dad, and the Bean. They loved. They loved Pugsley. The, they loved Pugsley. The minute they saw him, when Aunt Amanda opened the back door of the van and unlatched his cage, Pugsley poked his little wrinkled face out and sneezed. Then, as soon as Aunt Amanda put him down on the ground, he ran right over to Charles and Dad, who was standing in the front yard, and put his paws up on Charles's knees. Pugsley said, "Amanda, no jumping." But Charles was laughing. Ha! Nice to meet you," he said. He knelt down, on, and Pugsley started licking his face all over while Charles just laughed and laughed. Dad cracked up too. He sat down next to Charles and let Pugsley lick his face. "Well, you are such a cutie," said、D- Dad. "Said, and I've heard such terrible things about you." They can't possibly be true. Pugsley wriggled with his whole body and kept looking. Dad laughed some more. The bean came toddling over. A bee! He said, holding a hand. He laughed. His funny googly laughed. Dog seemed to love the bean. Maybe that. Maybe that's because the bean liked to pretend he was a dog. He often took naps on a dog bed, and lately his favorite toy was one of Buddy's hand-me-downs, a purple starfish that squeaked. Hold on, Lizzie. T- 
Lizzie told the bean. Let's make sure the uppy is ready to meet you. She knew it. She knew it was a good idea. She knew it was always. She knew it was always a good idea to take things slowly. When it came to toddlers and dogs, but before she could do anything, the bean was already he getting his face wet. He laughed even louder. Well, it looked like they'll get along," said Mom, who had come outside. She was holding Buddy on a leash. When Pugsley wa- when Pugsley saw Buddy, he wiggled out of Charles's arms and went flying over to say hello to the little brown puppy. Hi, hi, hi! I like you. Do you like me? Let's play. Buddy looked surprised for a moment, but then he started tugging on the leash, as if he wanted to run around with Pugsley. Let's take them out in back and let them run around in the yard. Lizzie suggested. Sounds like a good idea," said Aunt said Aunt Amanda, who was still standing near the van, watching the whole scene. "Can you stay for dinner?" Dad asked. No, we're we we're heading to the no we're heading to the country," Aunt Amanda said. "I should be on my way anyway. It looks like if Pugsley is off to a very good start in his new home, new temporary home," Mom corrected her, but she was smiling as she was as she looked down at Pugsley. Lizzie felt sure. Every that everything would work out just fine. Well, I guess that's the end of this chapter. Stay tuned for more when I read you the fifth chapter of this book, and I'll see you tomorrow.